this morning I was uh, looking over my remarks at breakfast. I thought I'd give them one last read through. And I uh, was sitting there tucking into my omelet and um, thinking dark thoughts about September 11th. And uh, I heard a voice, I heard singing. I heard, uh, if you're at the end, you know what that is. But, you know, I'm a professional, so I, I got myself back into the dark place. I, I soldiered on, and uh, the table next to me was soon surrounded by waiters who were clapping their hands and singing. Uh, still, I kept working, but when a six-foot-tall chipmunk came up to my table, I gave it. <laughs> I think Disneyland is probably a pretty incongruous place to talk about September 11th um, and, and the fiction that has uh, arisen from it, but uh, we'll, we'll carry on. And the first draft of the speech reminded me of the way uh, Joe Biden diagrammed Rudy Giuliani's sentences. He said that each one contained a noun, a verb, and 9-11. <laughs> so in my second draft, I took out all the verbs. <laughs> one can certainly argue that all novels written after 9-11 are 9-11 novels. Whether they intentionally address this subject or not, they were created in a world that was changed by 9-11. But I think that we can also agree that some novels are no more about 9-11 than others. Whether they treat the attacks and the aftermath directly or indirectly, they take as their subject what it means to be an American now, or what it means to be an alien in America, what it means to be an American abroad, or what America is doing abroad. Okay, so I want to say that um, most of my writing life I've written about catastrophe, and that was that I'm not going to talk too long, don't worry, I already hear. <laughs> um, my dad left the family three weeks after they dropped the atom bomb, and I took it personally. You know, I just thought, you know, the shit is hitting the fan, left, right, and center. You know, everything is going to hell in a handbasket. I'm using cliches because I was only 11. You know, I wasn't very well developed in my thought. And um, I, just from the very beginning, mixed or conflated personal disaster with the larger disaster that hopefully and usually doesn't hit us, but sometimes does. So anyway, Golden Days, um, the inspirational book about nuclear war. <laughs> it's the end of the world novel with a happy ending. And so I wrote a book in which um, an atom bomb drops. We don't know where it comes from. And everyone in the book survives and survives very well and uh, has a really good time doing it. As Carolyn has said, and I know Ellen is going to say a similar thing, it isn't how books come into being. You don't say to yourself, I'm going to do a novel about the impact of terrorism on people. They come into being in much more mysterious ways than that. Is this beautiful little church, and now there's a high fence around it, it's become a memorial fence, and people from all around the world have put flowers, and it's become a sort of shrine, and it was the church where they first took the bodies that, that they took from the World Trade Center. They took it there and it became a kind of Red Cross emergency station. You know, I sat on these gravestones from the 17th century and, and I thought, in spite of these catastrophes that have happened throughout history, life goes on. It was this incredible little cradle of beauty with, with graves from the early settlers. And I thought, this is where I'm going to end the novel. Um, and it is where the novel ends. But also, about that time, and I, I know you would have all read this, the New York Times Magazine published the transcripts of the cell phone calls that had gone out, both from the June planes. I find actually still hard to talk about this without getting rather emotionally moved by it. But I remember just sobbing when I read that article, because what people did in the time they had left in those upper floors of, of the towers. Um, you know, they weren't calling and, and raging, why aren't the helicopters here, why aren't the firemen here? All they wanted to do was call the people they loved and tell them that. And so, although it's 
wasn't meant to be a 9-11 book. 9-11 actually had a direct impact on the way that book ended. Naturally, so naturally, it's like breathing. After some important cataclysmic event, or some event that affects all of us, of course, we all began to write in the wake of that. We write in the wake of it without needing to, without thinking about it. Eventually, as you begin to write, you understand that you're doing that. Hopefully, you don't, you know, milk it. Hopefully, you just let it happen. And then eventually, if enough of us write good, readable books, someone will write the great book. After all the Vietnam books, my friend Tim wrote The Things They Carried. Okay, and every writer worth his salt was not jealous. We thought, it's done. <laughs> he did it. After we dropped the atom bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and we all sooner or later began to write post-apocalyptic books, and then Cormac McCarthy wrote The Road. <laughs> My God, every writer I know, nobody's jealous of it. Nobody was jealous of the things they carried. People were calling each other up, saying, have you read it? Well, have you read it over again? <laughs> Nobody hated it. Nobody got mad at me for giving it to them. I mean, it's that good. And we will have a 9-11 book that good. So go write one. <laughs>